Our next guest says Memorial Day weekend is the real moment of truth for the airlines. Let's bring in Helene Becker, Senior Airlines Analyst at Cowan. Helene, good to see you. Why Memorial Day? That seems awfully close. Yep, it is. Hi, Melissa. Thanks again for having me. Um, yeah, I think that what you and the team have been talking about this afternoon is exactly what we're seeing. Um, we think we're, we're getting a spring break, which we kind of thought we'd have somewhere between 1.1 and 1.3 million people traveling per day between now and Memorial Day weekend. And then Memorial Day weekend, we would see that increase closer to one and a half million to 1.6 million. I don't think we get back to two and a half million people a day where we were two years ago because you don't have international, um, excluding Mexico, Caribbean, where you do actually have fairly strong traffic. Um, international is down 95%. If you add in the Mexico and Caribbean, you're only down 65%. So there are clearly people willing to travel there. Um, the Americas in general are recovering faster. And then um, I think that business travel, that's not coming back until everybody kind of get, you know, gets back into their offices. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing differing times between you know May and September, October, November timeframe. So um, go ahead. So I'm sorry. So so on that note, though, um, how do you think about valuations and, and where airline stocks are valued right now in the context of business travel not coming back and you're not expecting business travel to come back for maybe another year or so? D does the return of business travel mean that valuations go higher? Or are we fully reflecting that right now at current levels? Yeah. So here's how I think about that. Um, we're back to pre-pandemic levels on a lot of these stocks. And it makes it really hard to be an aggressive buyer um, with new money in an environment where you're starting to discount 2023 earnings. And I have a real problem with that. Um, we're pretty optimistic on the fundamental story. It's the numbers that give me heartache because to your point, if we don't think we're getting business travel back before the fourth quarter, and that's the start of business traffic, and then it you know, goes through 2022, um, that means fares are gonna stay you know, somewhere between here and maybe up 10 or 15%. And it depends where you're going. I know people will say that they have $70 fares or $69 fares, but I was, I'm going to Florida next week, actually. <laughs> and when I went online yesterday, there was a $1,000 fare. And I said, okay, let's figure something different out. And I managed to get it. You know, I moved where I was flying into and, and got it cheaper. But yeah, fares, fares haven't come down that much in places like Florida, Mexico, the Caribbean. Um, where people want to go. It's fairs where people don't want to go that are really low. <laughs> hey, Eileen, it's BK. <laughs> so I've, I'm curious about that. If, if I want to put together a portfolio of airline stocks that are leisure travel, uh, that have some pricing power, as you're talking about, to destinations people want to go to, um, you know, what are the top three in your coverage list that would accomplish that? Yeah, I think Spirit, Allegiant, and, and JetBlue, the three, um, you know, most leisure-oriented airlines, um, those would, would be my top three picks. I guess I'd put Southwest in there, but BK, that stock is back to like 60-something, and that's pre-pandemic, and they haven't even begun to recover yet. So I'm not sure that would be my top pick, you know, but if you're, you're a balance sheet person, they've got a Fortress balance sheet and lots of good, you know, metrics in that regard. Um, but it wouldn't be my top pick. Last quick question, Helene, if you can. Um, a lot of passengers had booked flights during the pandemic and had the ability to cancel those flights and retain a credit on the airlines. How should we think about that credit working through the system? And, you know, as we see this rush of travel, how many people are actually charging their credit card anew for a flight as opposed to using credit that they've paid for in the past year? Yeah, I think it's about um, two thirds, one third. So two thirds charging new and one third using, you know, working through credits. Um, some of the credits have disappeared. Uh, in some cases, you know, airlines refunded the cash, but I think that, and, and in some cases people had trips planned and they wanna use that credit for that trip that they're going to reschedule. Um, because not every airline will give you the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you have an $1,800 credit and you're buying an $800 ticket, in some cases, you lose the other $1,000. So then you charge your credit card anew. So it's like two thirds, one third is the answer. Okay. Helene, thank you. Always great to speak with you. Helene Becker. Thanks for having me. Of Cowan. Uh,
Tim Seymour, some of these numbers cause this airline analyst heartache. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I, I think she's, you know, this is what she does. She's, she's looking at the numbers. She's, you know, they don't add up uh, to airlines that are now, you know, if you look at the stocks, first of all, relative to pre-pandemic, they're, they're probably at, at 90 percent of, of those prices. Delta around 52, 50 to 54 um, has, I think, some pretty serious resistance. So um, it, it's not surprising to hear the, the analysts making a call that is, is focusing on, on where some of these markets don't return where some of these enterprise values uh, make it for a different calculation um, discount rates but 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 again I, I think you have a you have a trade here and and look airlines have always been some of the great trading stocks even before mm -hmm. the pandemic I, I think delta again is a stock that i've i've traded but also invested in and had largely uh, a position in for the last five years it, it's given you about eight periods of of 25 or more percent uh drawdown or, or moves higher and i think you're going to get that i i think uh, but i don't think that that that's tomorrow. And I think, again, the overshoot to the upside is everything you should expect. Uh, and we haven't heard that kind of enthusiasm. It's when the airlines tell you we're, we're, we're back to business. And even on the leisure side, we're at 100 percent. We're excited. We're adding capacity. That's the time to sell it. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.